Hey everyone, this is my second video in my series about how to create a woodblock print. We left off the last video with the keyline design pasted down to the first block. In this video, I'll cover the entire carving process. This time, I want to start with a little description of the materials that you'll need for this step. Assuming you've gathered the material list from part one, there's only a few more things you'll need. The first thing you'll need, to start simple, is some kind of marker or highlighter. I typically use a highlighter, which I find to work well, but really anything could work. You're also going to need a brush for part two. Now, the brushes are for rubbing the pigment on the block, so I use a semi-specialized Japanese brush, but you can get away at like a lot of things in this series. You can get away with an uh, alternate version. For example, here's a shoe brush, and I think you could probably get away with something like this or maybe some kind of smaller brush. I'm not totally sure on what's out there, but um, even a foam brush, like I suggested in part one, could work for what we're doing. You also need some sort of cheaper brush, just a smaller, uh, maybe a watercolor brush would work. Uh, I think I picked these up from Michaels and it's just whatever they have. It's, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Finally, you'll need Sumi ink. Sumi ink is typically used in Japanese woodblock prints, and I'm going to recommend it for this tutorial. It's really the best for water-based woodblock prints when you talk about blacks and grays, and it's really not too hard to get your hands on. Like the first video, I'll make sure to leave a material list in the description with any useful websites or information that I have. With that, let's get to the carving. As I highlighted in part one, carving is a three-stage process. The first stage is to outline all of the lines in your drawing. So here I'm using the hangito, or the knife, to do this. You really want to take your time with these cuts, because this is what will really dictate what your print looks like at the end. The second stage of carving is the clearing. Here you'll want to use your U-gouge to take out all the excess wood in between the carved lines. In order to save some time, you generally want to clear as close to the lines as possible. However, starting out, I would recommend that you leave a little bit of space because this is an easy place to mess up and take out a line that you just carved. For wider areas, make sure you carve a deeper valley than elsewhere. And finally, the last stage, which I call cleaning. This is where you'll remove all the wood that's left over. You'll want to use a bullnose chisel, or at least some kind of chisel that you have, to remove that little bit of wood left between the cleared areas and your carved lines. In general, you always want to be aware of which direction the wood grain is going. This will dictate which way you should be using your chisel or gouges. Over time, you'll get better at this, just like anything else, and the general goal is just to keep the wood as smooth as possible, even in the recessed areas. Once you're done carving, you need to remove the paper from the wood block. Water dissolves the rice paste, so I usually just use my fingers and rub it off. Sometimes, when there's more detail, I like to use that shoe brush to really get it out of all the crevices. This is a pretty quick step though, it should only take a few minutes. At this point, the carving of the key blocks is finished. But before we move on to the carving of the color blocks, we have to make the transfer sheets. This process starts with taking impressions of the key block. Now we're going to use that Sumi ink. Before you start, make sure to moisturize the block with water thoroughly. I like to do this 5 or 10 minutes before I start taking impressions. Add a little bit of Sumi ink and mix it around with whatever brush you've found. Make sure to hit all the different surfaces or else you'll have blank spots in your impression. 
For this step, you can use printer paper again, but I generally like to use a thicker paper. Put it into the registration marks carefully, and then rub the back with the rubbing tool of your choice. We talked about some options in the last video. And that's all it is. That's your first impression. Don't worry too much about the appearance, because these are just a step in the carving process. Also, you'll want to make sure to print more than you have color blocks. This will make sure you have some backups. And here's where the highlighter comes in. I'm doing the color separations for this print, so I'm highlighting each area that I want to be carved so that I can add color there. In this case, it'll be a layer for the water. Remember, this is not the color that you'll be printing, it's only to see what you want to carve. From here out, the carving process is the same as was shown for the key block. Instead of gluing down a drawing like we did before, you'll glue down a transfer sheet, which we just made. Even though you probably have several more blocks to carve, each one will take a lot less time than the key lines because there's much less detail. I didn't capture a video of me carving each color block, but I did create a highlight of the first one. Here's that video. And here it is, the first color block done. You can see in a second that just a few weeks later, and I've finished all the color blocks in this set. I think you'll probably find that the color blocks are a lot quicker to carve than the key block. At this point, all the color blocks are prepared and ready to make your first print. I'm really excited to show that process in part three. For me, it's always the best part to see your print come to life for the first time. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments so that everybody can benefit from them. I really hope you guys are finding this series useful or interesting, and I thank you so much for watching and supporting me, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.